Hello, I'm Dr. Robert Coffin, and I'm about to go beyond the terminus. Have you ever had problems negotiating a canal with a file? In the American Association of Endodontics Forum, I was surprised to read that young endodontists were having difficulty doing exactly the same thing. Perhaps that is because we've relied too much on the flexibility of rotary nitide files. Knowing how to bend a hand file to negotiate a canal is one of the most important skills that you have to develop when you perform endodontic treatment. File bending is an art, essential for good endodontic technique. The general rule is this. The more severe the obstruction or the curve, the sharper the bend must be in order for you to negotiate past this curve or obstruction. The type of bend placed on the instrument is very important. Placing a gradual curve on the file generally leads to creation of a false path or ledge. In order to bypass the obstruction or negotiate the canal, it's necessary to put a very, very fine bend on the very last part of the instrument. The bend must be rounded and not acute. Placing an acute angled bend on the instrument will make the instrument much more likely to fracture in the canal, resulting in further obstruction. There are several expensive commercial instruments available to assist you to do this. I still prefer stainless steel hand files in the smaller sizes of 6, 8, and 10. Unlike night tie instruments, they can easily be bent with a cotton plier, or if a smaller bend is required, something like a pair of nail clippers whose edges have been dulled to prevent the cutting of the file. Thanks to Dr. Gary Carr for that tip. It is common for instruments to encounter difficulties in the middle or apical thirds. In order for us to negotiate such blockages, we need a certain amount of enlargement of the coronal aspects of the canal to allow the instrument the freedom necessary to negotiate the blockage. Insufficient removal of coronal tooth structure needlessly constricts the ability of the instrument to be guided more apically and increases the chances for ledging and further blockage. That's not to say that the coronal aspect of the canal should be enlarged excessively with instruments such as Gates Glidden Drills. Those instruments are pretty much passe with the development of more sophisticated coronal shaping instruments and more conservative access designs. However, even with today's increasingly flexible modern instruments, negotiating the apical third still requires some enlargement of the coronal aspects of the canal to allow for penetration of irrigants and eventual obturation. Copious amounts of irrigation should always be used when inserting files into the canal. Files should never be inserted dry. As soon as the obstruction is encountered, the instrument should be withdrawn slightly and then reinserted at a slightly different rotational angle. This instrument is used in as, as an antenna and should never be used with forceful apical pressure. Should this instrument still not go to place, remove it, examine the instrument for kinks or bends, and discard it if they're present. The new instrument should be bent in exactly the same way and care should be taken to examine which direction the instrument seems to negotiate the canal best. In extremely small or difficult canals, it's not uncommon to go through and discard as many as a dozen instruments before finding the correct path of insertion, bend, and curvature. Extravagance is not a luxury when it comes to discarding defective files. It's a necessity. Once the instrument goes to the suspected length, check the length with an apex locator. The most critical part now occurs. You must move the hand file in very, very short amplitude in and out motions in order to create a path in the canal. Many clinicians do not understand that at this point, these small instruments are mostly pathfinding, moving through collagen and pulp. Invariably, you will remove the instrument too far and then be unable to reinsert it again because it hangs up on a ledge or some sort of obstruction. Remove it, examine it for kinks and unwinding, re-irrigate the canal, and then re-bend bend the instrument in exactly the same bend, or select new instrument, insert it in the same rotation angle and with the same bend, and repeat the procedure. Yes, it can be a bit tiring. The amplitude of the instrument is very, very small. Once this instrument becomes loose, remove it, take a second larger instrument, bend in exactly the same way and return that instrument in exactly the same direction. Sometimes it's necessary to go back and forth with instruments such as a 6, 8, 10, and 15 instrument several times. In some cases, I'll even go beyond the apex just slightly with very small sized files such as 6, 8s, and 10s to check that I have reproducible patency. Under no circumstances should rotary instrumentation be used in the canal that requires you to finesse one of these smaller instruments into the apex. Aggressive insertion of rotary instrumentation to try to power past the curve or blockages will, will ensure that the canal is ledged with the tip and you'll be very unlikely to reinsert the original working instrument that you had previously placed. It also risks unwinding or outright fracture the file 
if they're used so forcefully. Don't be in a hurry to go to rotary files. Negotiating files to the apex is an essential and crucial skill that needs to be learned. This skill used to require the mind mapping of the canal anatomy, visualizing the canal and richer in your mind's eye. CBCT imaging has helped immensely with this. We can now see teeth in 3D. We can anticipate curves in anatomy, at least a certain extent. However, the resolution of CBCT images that we obtain now in a clinical setting is still not fine enough to visualize the minute complex anatomy that we see with the in vitro anatomic scan studies. We need to combine this with the clinical skill of using the file like an antenna. This level of expertise can only come through practice and experience that is derived from doing thousands of cases over a career. The more you practice, the more adept you become. If you don't have the patience for this, or you want to get more consistent results, consider referring the case to an endodontist. Remember, when we do the right thing, we all get better. Patients and clinicians. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to having you join me again when we go Beyond the Terminus.